Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about power. And I believe that this video could save a boat owner thousands of dollars. So if you get anything out of this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video. So cue the intro. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. First, I wanted to talk about AC power. AC power on a boat is where you have most of your real power. And if you're powering something with AC, it's probably only low current, but high power. And with high power, you can have big problems. High power equals fire risk. So everybody seems to know about GFI. And in almost all the boats that came out after 1999 when this boat was made, they all have GFI interrupters, breakers, and all that. But some of the newer technology is arc fault detectors. Arc fault detectors will detect an arc in the line, whether it be the high or the low or whatever. If there's any type of arc, it's going to shut down that power. I always have an arc fault between the shore power and Aquarius. And so the whole boat is protected because any power coming in, if there's an arc in the boat, it's going to shut it down. So it actually tests the boat at the same time that it's actually protecting the boat. This is my device that I put in between shore power and Aquarius. And you can see well, the arc fault breaker, GFI breaker, and the power counter. So I don't have to rely on the marina to, to tell me how much power I used. I can see it myself. And I always like that. And this is always plugged in if I'm plugged into shore power. So that's one thing that we do. We should put an arc fault detector, and you should too, inside your boat anywhere you have AC power, you want to have an arc fault detector, which is an arc fault breaker. Any arcs that happen on the boat, you're going to be protected. It'll shut down and then you can find the problem. Make sure that all those connections are good and that will protect you and your family on your boat. This type of box, if you, could, if you make one and you have it all plugged in, it could save your life. I heard of one Amel that burnt down because the actual marina was hit by lightning and it blew out the fan that was on board. The fan caught fire because of an arc. Now, an arc fault detector could have saved that boat and it could save your boat too. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about electronics and your DC power. So many people these days are changing their house batteries to lithium iron phosphate. And Javilla and I believe that lithium iron phosphate batteries are the best improvement that we made on Aquarius. But with all those upsides, there is one downside. And that one downside is they all have a BMS. And the BMS is going to shut the battery down if there's too much voltage. Usually when there's too much voltage, it's because you're charging the batteries. Now, if they shut off, you're gonna have all those little electrons running down the line and then they're blocked. Well, what happens? You have a surge in the voltage throughout your boat and it can blow out things like your chain counter or your forward looking sonar or the lights like these. Those lights cost like $200 a piece. And the lights up at the top of the mast, those lights there, you, you know, your, your mast headlight is LEDs. And those lights there can cost upwards of 
400 or 500 dollars. Now you want to protect those lights. So what do you do? Put a DC to DC converter in between your house batteries and all your lights, your chain counters, your radios, your forward looking sonars, anything that's expensive that is hooked up to your house batteries, you should have a DC to DC converter in there. Anything that says that it's run, it should run off 24 or 12 volts, run it off 12 volts. Put a DC to DC converter in there that is 24 to 12 if you're a 24 volt system. That's going to give you a much better chance of protecting those devices. Some of these devices are, you know, $2,000, $1,000, couple hundred dollars for the lights on our bow. But you can protect all of that with a DC to DC converter that might cost between $30 and $50. Or you can protect your whole boat by going 24 to 24 volt DC to DC converter on your whole panel. Now, that might be a little bit expensive, maybe two or three hundred dollars, but wouldn't you rather blow out a two hundred and fifty dollar DC to DC than blow out your forward looking sonar and your chain counter that costs maybe a thousand dollars a piece? It's always better to protect yourself. So, protect yourself by putting DC to DC converters in between your expensive stuff and your house batteries, especially if you have lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'm going to make this short. You need DC to DC converters in between your house batteries, especially if they're lithium iron phosphate and any other device. It doesn't matter if you're running 12 volts or 24 volts on your battery system. If you run 12 volts, put a 12 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converter. If you're a 24 volt system, run a 24 to 12 volt DC to DC converter if the device that you're trying to run can run off 24 or 12. If it's only 24, use a 24 to 24 volt DC to DC converter. This video can save you thousands. Just use the information, study up on the arc fault breakers and GFI breakers. Also study up on the DC to DC converters that are available and you could save thousands, especially if you have lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's it guys. Share, like, subscribe. See you in the next video. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish.